Welcome back, Better Five, to Seven Days to Improve Your Walk. Here we are, it's day one. We're gonna get right into it today. We're gonna to start with a very brief warm up. We're going to do 10 minutes of walking movement based cardio exercise, followed by some strengthening exercises of those lower limbs, a quick balance challenge, and then we're gonna wrap things up with a nice little cool down. Let's go ahead and get started, making sure we've got some space around us. We will be moving around our room, so as much space as you can allow. And we're gonna get right into it by breathing right on in, reaching up. Great big inhale, exhale, drop it down. One more time, let's breathe right on in, reach up. Exhale, drop it down. Let's start into some great big arm swings, waking up those limbs like we're giving a great big hug and opening right back up. From these arm swings, let's open it up even more and do some arm circles. I like to start mine going backwards. Great big arm circles, waking up those muscles, those joints. All right, very gently, let's go ahead, switching directions forward. And three, two, one. Bring those hands to a rest. Let's place them on our hips. Let's do some great big wide hip circles like we're using a hula hoop. Put the most dramatic hula hoop in the world. Sticking our bums all the way back up behind us. Then driving those hips forward. All right, let's go ahead and switch directions. You should feel a nice gentle stretch in those hamstrings, the back of your legs, when you drive those bums backwards. All right, last one, let's bring ourselves back to center. Now let's open up those hips. You can hold on to that chair if you need for balance here. And we're gonna go knee up, outwards and drop it down for some hip openers. We can do one at a time. Almost like we're treading water if anyone's ever been a swimmer. Just knee up, out and down. Almost like we're climbing off a bicycle seat. And two, one. Let's switch sides. If you need something as your base of support, just switch sides. Otherwise, we're gonna drive the left knee up out and down, hip openers, climbing up and off that bike seat, really nice and dramatic, treading water up, out, down, really focusing on that moving the whole range of motion. And three, two, one. Drop it down, shake out those legs. We're gonna do one last quick little mobility stretching warm up exercise before we get right into it. Holding on to that chair, that wall, that countertop for support. Let's lift that right leg up, taking our right toes, draw some circles on the ground. Now this mobility, this flexibility of our lower leg, our foot, is really key to maintaining a healthy stride as we get older. Keeping that mobility in the dorsiflectors, so those muscles that allow us to go whoop and flex that foot, that will keep us from developing that shuffling gait that we sometimes see. All right, drop that foot down. Left foot can come up. Let's draw those circles on the ground. Sometimes I find one foot is a little bit easier than the other, which is totally fine. Sometimes you need to focus a little bit more to get a foot to go in a certain direction. And that's totally normal, totally fine. Just gives you a little mental workout as well. Perfect, let's drop that down. And now we're going to get into a very gentle cardio circuit. So this is where we're gonna do some task specific movements. So this means not only are we building our bodies a bigger engine, making it more powerful, we're doing movements specific to the task of walking. So think of these as little drills, like an athlete. 
So let's go ahead and get things warming up. Little tiny steps. Find that rhythm, whatever speed is best for you. And when you're ready, let's throw in some arms very gently. Now this is about kind of a cardio endurance, so we don't need to go all out right away. We're just getting our bodies moving, mimicking that natural stride that we would do if we were on a walk. So once we found that, let's get into our first task specific drill here. So we're gonna flex our feet as much as we can. Bring that knee up, stomp it down for a march. So opposite knee to opposite hand, flexing that foot as much as you can. We're really working on those dorsiflexors of our feet, driving those knees into our chest, all the way up at whatever pace is right for you, but we're working on endurance. So take your time, find that comfortable speed, and I really want you to focus on the instep of your foot heading to the ceiling. Really big flex. All the way up. Knees high. If this gets a little tricky, if you're feeling a little unsteady on your feet, grab onto that chair. Just flex those feet. Drive those knees through the ceiling. All the way up. Halfway there, we've got one more minute of this. Really creating that muscle memory of those nice flexed feet. Nice deep breaths. Chests are proud, bracing with those bellies and driving those knees all the way up. All right, 10 more seconds. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Just little walks. Have a little reset. Grab that water if you need. Again, we're finding that comfortable rhythm, but that's the key word here is I want us to have a rhythm. Being able to coordinate our steps to a beat is one of those key task-specific rules and goals for walking. So if you're ever out and about, you could listen to music, you could hum something to yourself, find a favorite song that kind of matches a beat that's comfortable to you, and see if you can match up your strides to that song. All right, now that we've had a little reset, we're gonna do the opposite. So let's drive that knee up, Point our toe as hard as we can, face it to the ground, bring it back down, other side. These are kind of like a dressage horse, if you've ever seen those competitions where they wear the top hats and the coats with the coattails. But really, really now working on pointing those feet, doing the opposite motion, kind of plantar flexion, pointing those feet flexing those muscles of the bottom of our feet, of our calves. Really dramatic here. No one would ever walk like this in real life, but this is just a great way to work on those motor patterns, that mobility, that flexibility of our feet. Again, if you feel a little unsteady, that is totally fine, but grab on to something for support. Really dramatic pointed feet. Almost like you're a ballerina in those point toes. All the way up. We've got 30 more seconds of this. Almost there. We flexed, we've pointed. We're working on that mobility of those lower legs of our feet. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 
three, two, and one. Walk it out with me. Now this exercise, we're going to walk in a circle because this kind of practices that both of our feet will be doing different things when we're walking in the real world. We're never actually just going to be walking like on a treadmill when we're going through the supermarket, when we're shoveling snow, when we're gardening, when we're at the zoo. So this is just some practice of tight turns or leaning in to one side. So with that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to walk some circles. So find that space in your space. Doesn't have to be huge. I'm doing it pretty tight. If you have more space, feel free to use it. But we're just going to go ahead and walk really tight, close circles. Just like as though we were in gym class in school, keeping it nice and tight. And really think about what that inside foot is doing, how it's pivoting. We'll feel the weight shift a little bit differently on that inside foot compared to the outside. Your neighbors might think you're a little crazy right now, but this is amazing task specific. We'll see physios doing this, OTs using this to keep those motor patterns, that task specific. You'll hear me say that over and over again while we build that bigger engine. All right, as if we weren't dizzy enough, let's go ahead. Let's switch directions halfway there. Just really tight circles. Taking your time. Watch what that inside foot is doing. How the weight distribution changes. And how this might mimic more kind of what the walking we would do in the wild, if you will. All right, let's take three more laps of our space. I'm pretty spoiled. Mine's pretty small today. All right, and last one. Really look at what's doing. Keep that chest proud. Belly is bracing. And let's bring ourselves right back to center. All right, let's bring a soft little march here. Almost there. And the last task specific while building up that engine we're going to do is almost like some gallops. And this is going to work on our ability to propel with one foot. So just kind of like a horse would walk, you're going to stomp down with your right foot and use that foot to lift up and lift that left foot off the ground. This one might take a little while to get the rhythm of, but we'll do right side first and then we'll do the left. So we're stomping and using that foot to push down, lifting the left off the ground. If it helps for you, you can do your hands like a really dramatic march. Or you can keep that hand on a chair, on a wall, on a countertop for some stability. Powering down and propelling ourselves with that foot. Kind of works on our foot's ability to generate power one at a time. Really focusing. And we're never locking out our feet. We're locking out our knees at any point in this. Things are nice and relaxed. Keeping that chest nice and strong. All right, we're going to switch sides in three, two, and one. Drop it down. Switching sides. We're on our left foot now. Stomp that foot down and press it through the floor to gallop yourself up onto the right side. Really pushing through the floor, working on that propulsion. Kind of like the in-place galloping of a horse. If you've ever seen kids run around with those hobby horses and they gallop on one leg. Really working on that propulsion of one side. And better five, we have 30 more seconds and we're almost through our endurance standpoint. 
We'll go ahead, work on some strength. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Shake it out, grab that water, meet me right back here and we'll work on that strength. Welcome back. Now that we're hydrated, now that we're rested, let's get into some gentle strengthening to work on those muscles of our lower legs. First up, we're going to do some sit to stands. So it's exactly what it sounds like. You're going to want to have a chair right behind you. That chair shouldn't have any wheels, should be nice and sturdy. And then we're going to plant our feet just about shoulder width apart, screwing those feet into the floor. And we're going to lead with our bums, sitting back down, tap it very gently, stand back up sitting back down and pressing through the floor, pressing through those heels to come back up. And I want you to really look at how my chest is staying nice and proud. And then I'm looking about six feet in front of me. I'm trying to make contact, eye contact with you guys, but normally we'll be six feet in front of us looking at the floor. We're pressing through those heels, standing up nice and tall and resisting gravity on the way down. Just like how we don't really throw ourselves into chairs, we're not throwing ourselves down into the squat, we're just easing ourselves down. We're gonna do 30 more seconds of these. And all the way back up, sitting back down pressing through those heels back up. Feel free to go at your own pace. Take as much time as you need. And three, two, and one. We're going to stand right back up, shake out those legs, and we're going to go into some abductions. So you can do this by standing behind your chair, gripping with both hands if you would like a little bit of a balance boost. Otherwise, we're gonna stand up nice and tall, stacking our rib cage above our hips. Feet are about shoulder width apart. And we are going to lift up our right leg like a pendulum and bring it back down. And like I said, you can grip onto a chair in front of you, grip onto a wall beside you, whatever you need to make sure that you can do this movement safely. Up and we're gonna hold and let it down, hold, and let it down, hold, let it down, hold, and let it down, and five, four, three, two, and one. Drop down, shake it out, let's switch sides. We're standing now on our left leg. Now if you're right-handed, this might be your weaker leg. That's totally fine. That's why we train them one at a time. So you can grip onto that chair, place your hand against the wall, or if you're feeling nice and confident, just standing up straight. Feet just about hip width apart, rib cage stacked above your hips. We're gonna lift out and back in. Just like a little very controlled pendulum. Really see if you can focus on not relying on momentum here. And out, back in, you should feel a little burn right in the side of your booty here. And really make sure you're not locking out the legs of that weight-bearing leg. You want a nice soft bend in the knee. And you might feel your lower leg kind of move around. That is totally fine. That's just it helping keep you upright. And five, four, three, two, and one. Let it down. Shake it out. This is our last strength movement and then we'll do it all one more time. We're going to do some calf raises. So just like before, if you would like the stability boost, 
hands on the chair in front of you. You'll stand behind it, hand on the wall, or you can do hands on your hips. And we're going to rise all the way up onto our tiptoes and then drop it down. All the way up, drop it down. All the way up and let's resist gravity on the way down. Don't let it win. All the way up to those tiptoes, drop it down. And this is working on the strength of our calf muscles. This is working on preserving that range of motion in our lower legs so we can get up over curbs, we can climb the stairs. And lots of our balance actually comes from those muscles of our lower legs. I know we always think it's all about the core, but sometimes we just really need to work on those lower legs because there's been crazy studies about how they use those muscles to explore space when we're standing still. It's really neat. All right, and five, four, three, two, and one. Let's shake it out. We're gonna go back to the beginning one more time with those sit to stands. Please go at your own pace. What's comfortable for me might not be comfortable for you. We're gonna drop those booties down. Drive through those heels back up. Really focusing on pressing through all four corners of those feet. All right, better five. We're going to do five, four, three, two, and last one. There we go, let's shake it out into those abductions. Feet are slightly wider than hip width apart. We're stack stacking that rib cage above our hips. Chest is nice and proud. Holding onto that chair, that wall, or that countertop if you need it. And let's start on the right side. Foot goes out and back in. Almost like the tail on one of those cat clocks. Let the eyes go back and forth and the tail swings. Very controlled motion. And five, four, three. Holding on to your support if you need it. Two. And one, let's switch sides. Shake it out, soft bend in that weight-bearing knee. And out and in. Really making sure that we're breathing through all of this. Holding on to that chair, that wall, that countertop if we need. And five, Four, three, two, and one. Let's shake it out. Last set, we'll do some balance. We'll cool it down after this. Let's rise up onto those toes. Resist gravity on the way down. All the way up, all the way down. Up, down. We'll see if the mic picks up my ankle cracking my ankle likes to chat a little bit. All the way up, drop those heels down. All the way up onto those toes, drop them down. And five, four, three, two, and one. Shake it out. All right, last movement here, better five. We're almost there. We're gonna work on some balance. So this is where I want you to stand to the left of your chair for now. And if you need it, we're going to hold on to it for support. And we're gonna take that right foot, lift it up just about to shin height of that left foot. We're not going crazy all the way up, just enough. And I want you to stack that rib cage above your hips. Keep that chest proud. Soft bend in that knee. 
If you've ever seen those videos where people in choirs pass out or faint, it's usually because they're locking out their legs. And we're just going to work on that balance. If this gets a little easy, take away that hand, take away that support. You might kind of feel those muscles of your lower left leg firing a little bit more as they had to explore space. All right, now let's go ahead. We're gonna let ourselves relax in five, four, three, two, one. Drop it down, switching sides. So we can still stay on this side or you can head over to the right side of your chair. And by right, I mean the left side of your chair. And we're going to go ahead and we're gonna lift up that left leg. Soft bend in the right. And if this gets too easy, let's go ahead, taking that hand off for support. Feeling that muscle kind of firing. I like to consider myself as a person with fairly good balance, but even here when I really focus, I can feel those muscles, my tibialis anterior in my shin, my gastrocnemius in my calf, I can feel them making those minute contractions to help keep me upright. It's really cool. We're gonna let it go in three, two, and one. Drop it down, shake it out. Let's go ahead, cool things down now, better five. So we're gonna reach right on up, lacing those hands together, and let's tilt it to the left side. Great big inhale, lean to the right. Dropping those hands down into some great big arm circles. We'll do five backwards and five forwards. Heading forwards. Perfect. Down into those hips. Great big hip circles. Other direction. Perfect. Now better five. We're going to stretch out those quadriceps. So what we're going to do is it is imperative you hold on to this chair or that wall or that countertop for support. But we're going to take our left hands. We're going to grab onto the instep of our left foot. Soft bend in that right leg. Anytime we're on one leg, anytime we're just standing still on one or both legs actually. We want to have a soft bend in those knees. We're never locking out our knees. We're going to drop that down. Switching sides, hand is there supporting ourselves. Right hand, right foot, pressing those hips forward and through. Let's go ahead and drop that down. One final stretch, we're gonna stretch the posterior chain of our legs, the back of our legs, pressing against our chair. We're going to line up our toe with the leg of our chair, pressing through. I want you to have that back leg nice and straight, nice and planted. As we lean towards that chair, see if you can keep that heel down. We never want to bounce in any stretch. We never want to cause ourselves pain. Let's bring ourselves back up to center, switching sides. Notice how that back heel is as planted as can be. If it's too easy of a stretch, increase that distance. If it's a little tricky, shrink it down a little bit. Pressing forward and through. Now you should feel a great big stretch all the way from those hamstrings down to those calves. Bring yourselves back up. All right, better five. This has been seven days to improving your walk, day one. I'll see you next time.